Okay, got a broken air compressor. I went to pump up my tires today and the air compressor didn't come on. It's a Campbell Hosfeld. There's the model information. This is most likely our issue, this switch. Let's open it up. I don't have a, a tripod here, so I gotta, but I just gotta pop this cover off. Right here, just gonna pop it on the outside. So this is what it looks like with the cover off. Here's the cover. There was a screw in the front, screw in the back, and uh, it's got here to come off to get access to the screw. Um, this looks pretty good. This is a 20 year old compressor. There's the piston right here that makes the, the compressor the air. It's, it's a dry system. It doesn't take any oil. So, and I've never had an issue. This is the first time in 20 years. Uh, I'm thinking about, I can just kind of hot wire it. And I can go, I can just bypass the switch and go black to black, white to white. And then, um, see if it runs. Let me get this all rigged up. Okay, so I got, just kind of got it rigged up here, black to black, white to white. And, uh, and then I got, I'm plugged in to a power strip so I can use this on off switch to test it. Uh, so let's, let's give it a try. Okay. So that was the issue. All we did is, you know, the power comes in through this, this large cable and it goes through the switch and then right to the motor. So we bypass the switch and it works. Uh, let's see if uh, parts are available for this thing and if they are and it's reasonable I'll just buy a new switch if not uh, we'll explore a plan B of retrofitting some sort of a different switch that's uh it's, I got it unplugged let's take these wires back off of it I want to remove the switch and uh, see if maybe we can't repair it it could just be dirty Oh, I need a Phillips head. <laughs> Alright, I had to do just like a little quarter turn to get this unhooked. Alright, let's uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this whole oops. I'm gonna turn this whole uh, assembly off and try to get a better look at it. Maybe maybe we just gotta clean it up. Okay, so here's our pressure switch all removed. Uh, I I can tell, you can see here. The contacts are a bit burned up. Okay. So you can see how that, I mean, it's pretty simple. It's, it's very possible that I could just clean the contacts up and this would work again. Um, but I, I, I'd rather just replace it. Punched in the model number into the search engine. Uh, the first website I found is e-replacement parts. This looks like the right compressor. Uh, right here, number 21 is the switch and it looks just like a, the one on our compressor $91.40 a little expensive this is the same part number Amazon not a big fan here's one on eBay 52 uh, let's check uh, let's go to eBay there's one for $44.99. Free shipping, that's not too bad. I'm gonna go with this one. So I did buy the new one. The 
new one came with this piece attached to the pressure switch so we got to get the tube off of the other one and uh, figure out how to do that it seems to be kind of like a, a shark bite where you push push this in to release it and then you push the tube and it kind of grabs it and it won't come back out so we got to get that apart and we got to change over our pressure relief valve and our gauges and our, and our regulator I already have this this gauge loose. I needed I needed to take this one off to clear the the, the pulley uh, when I when I took off the pressure switch. And when I put it all back together, you can see that there was like a sealant on all the threads. I'm not sure what that sealant is. It definitely um, makes getting everything apart kind of difficult. This is what I'm going to use to put it back together. It's not the same, but. Uh, this is pretty good stuff and it says that it's gonna good for applications up to 2600 psi all right so let's let's get all these pieces off of here this one i already had loose it takes uh let's see nine, seven sixteenths this one here is the same they take a little bit of effort to break these loose. I'm working from home, so the to the tools I have here are pretty uh, low grade. I keep my you know all my good stuff at the shop. Okay. This is kind of how the, pr the pressure switch was too coming off the tank where once you broke it loose it still didn't come easy because there's that, that sealing on the threads. Looks like there's also quite a bit of rust. Okay. Right, let's get this pressure relief valve off of it. 9 sixteenths again. Okay, that one came a little easier. It's got this, uh, I believe this is the valve itself. Uh, I don't, I don't want to really mess with it. Um, but basically what these things do, this is the, the valve is on this side. This is the unloader tube. And so, so basically what it does is after the air compressor builds up all of its pressure, and it stops pumping, it always goes and lets out a little burst of air. And what that what that's doing is it's it's re releasing the air in this tube. So when it goes to kick on again, there's no there's no, it's not pressurized, and it can it can restart. Uh, so if if this has failed, it's either going to fail close and there'll be pressure in here and it won't restart. It should trip, trip the breaker. Or um, the belt will spin. The belt, will, you know, the, the motor will spin, but the belt will slip on this pulley. Uh, or it'll just leak all the time. And you'll hear it leaking all the time. So we gotta, we gotta get this off of here. You can push in this little collar, and it should come off. There it goes. So basically. What I have to do is just push this in, this little collar on the outside, and that released it. So this should just put, well, let's start putting it back together. See, it, it just barely clears that pulley. Oh. There. Just got 
tiny bit further. This unloader tube just pushes in. And then, yeah, that's it. It's all the way in. It won't pull back out. Okay, so the black for the motor goes on top. Black goes on top. White goes on the bottom. Same for the power supply. Black on top, white on the bottom. White, black. Let's put the ground back up. Okay, let's put our ground screw back in. that it's not already threaded you got to cut your own thread okay I cleaned up the threads a little bit on all these with just a little steel wall vertical. That looks good. There is a direction arrow on this, this way. Shoot. Damn. Our tube is in the way. Let's see if we can get that back apart. Okay, not too bad. And see if it runs. Okay, so that little tss at the end was this um, unloading valve that takes the air off of off of this tube. I do hear a leak. It was the regulator. It was letting out air. Interesting. So I'm not sure if I have a, a regulator issue or if this gauge is wrong because the, the regulator is all the way up and it's only reading 60 pounds here. 
which would be 60 pounds coming out here. So uh, one thing I can do is I can just switch these and see if it's still reading. Okay, so I switched the the gauges around and now now this one's saying 80 and I know this gauge does go up to it uh, was about 110 before this gauge is still stuck at 60 so I know that this gauge is no good and I'm thinking that this regulator is only allowing 80 psi so I like to put about a hundred in my in my bike tires I might I might uh, I'm gonna get a price I might change this and I'm gonna have to get a new well, really, it's not that important as long as as long as I get a pressure reading here that I know is accurate. I think this is fine. I think that that's that's gonna do it for this one. We're uh, we're fixed. On to the next thing.